Pradipikas, one of the most important texts on Hatha Yoga. Last videos you spoke about the first and second chapter. Now, can you talk a little bit about the contents of the third and fourth chapters? So the third and fourth chapters bo uh, both sorry, encompass the more advanced aspect of the practices. The foundation has been laid, steadiness of body and mind through the asanas, purification of the physical body and the energy body through Anuloma Viloma and the Kriyas, and already an awakening of the Kundalini Shakti taking place through uh, the advanced pranayamas, the eight advanced pranayamas. And now in the third chapter comes the introduction of some practices which are most, much less well known in the Western world. And they have been kept secret throughout the history. And now uh, greatly thanks to teachers such as Swami Shivananda and Swami Vishnu Devananda, then the serious uh, yoga aspirant from the Western world can learn such practices. Those mudras and bandhas are, for example, Mahaveda, Mahabandha, Mahamudra, and, and so many others, Shambhavi Mudra, uh, Shakti Chalani, and so, and so many others. So uh, I'm very happy, actually, um, parenthesis here, a little tension to do this video for uh, Yoga Vidya, since uh, this group and all the teachers here are very dear to my heart. And I find it is a very valuable place, among other reasons, because this is a place where you have a chance to learn all those very advanced practices under, um, under proper guidance, in a safe environment, but at the same time, uh, not compromising the power of the practice for the sake of security. There is a perfect balance here, where there is absolutely no danger to practice it in these conditions here, but at the same time, nothing is held back from the student. The students have the ability to learn all these esoteric, little-known practices, which are very powerful, to the fullest extent. So this is really the main subject matter of the third chapter. The fourth chapter, then the title is Raja Yoga. And Raja Yoga in that sense means mind control. It means really deep meditation and Samadhi. So what few people know or remember is that, or understand, is that actually Hatha Yoga is a, it's a whole spiritual system. It's not just some exercises that you do, like headstand or lotus pose or something. It's really a whole uh, spiritual system based upon the awakening of the Kundalini. And Hatha Yoga has its own meditation practice that's, that, it, that, sorry, that is advocated by the Hatha Yoga Pradipika. And that meditation practice is called Laya. Laya means absorption. It's absorption of the mind. So instead of trying to concentrate on one object and building up a power of concentration, you just allow yourself, your mind to be absorbed in one object. At the beginning of the uh, fourth chapter of the Hatha Yoga Pradipika, absorption and the light, and the inner light is mentioned. But most of the practice and the explanations are based around the nada. And nada, um, are the inner sounds that one can hear. You know, the sounds coming from the heart, the unstruck sounds, which are very distinct. They can be sounds of a conch or a bell, or ocean waves, or the thunder, or a number of uh, musical instruments. And they are so clear and distinct, even though they are inner sound, that oftentimes the practitioner will have to uh, double check because always thinking that that music or that thunder may come from the outside. Once you open your eyes or you compare with your, uh, you know, co-yogi sitting next to you, you know it was coming from your own, from your own, uh, from your own self. So, the nature of the mind is such that when you hear some sound, the mind will naturally be drawn to them, and there will be a state of mind following the sound. Examples, of course, in daily life are, uh, are music. Music is maybe the best example in which the mind can uh, switch to a different mood within seconds and really not being able to escape that mood of the, of the music that will be ambient. And so that leads, uh, this psychological fact makes that once the mind can connect to the inner sounds, it's easier to meditate than not to meditate. And that's the whole idea. And there is a whole methodology of going from more dense sounds to more subtle sound until in the end, uh, one can totally merge with the silence of the self, of Brahman, of the Atman. The, um, 
uh, even though the subject matter of the Hatha Yoga Pradipika, Pradipika is principally you know, Hatha Yoga and Kundalini Yoga, then um, at the very end of the fourth chapter also there is a discussion about Vedanta and Advaita Vedanta concept and the Atman and Brahman and the experience of, of oneness. The, in the very last verse, Swatmarama is trying to, in a very concrete and, and down-to-earth way, which is uh, very typical to uh, Tantric uh, traditions, is going back to the basics. It says, even though we talked about, I'm paraphrasing now, we talked about quite a bit of theory at the end and promising some benefits and so on, but what really counts is one's personal achievement. Is one able to, uh, as one purified, the uh, physical body and energy system? Has one awakened the Kundalini Shakti? Is one able to put the prana, the subtle life force, and the Kundalini power inside the Sushumna Nadi and thereby attaining Samadhi and meditating deeply? If so, one is a great yogi. If not, one is just a vain talker. Okay, so this is the conclusion of the Hatha Yoga Pradipika. And thank you for asking me questions about this. Uh, really valuable teach, uh, scripture which we all benefit from reading, studying and, and practicing the teachings of.